So I'm currently at the aeroplane to do some engine runs as it hasn't flown for over a month and what I'm going to show you now is how the APU, the auxiliary power unit, is started. This is the fuel page. This is the DC electrics. And this is the bleed air and this is the schematic for the bleed air coming from the APU. So let's just go through the start. This is the APU switch. We turn it to the run position. It then goes through a built-in self-test. You can see APU in byte. That's the self-test. When that completes, I can start the APU. Okay, so we now select APU to start. And what I will immediately do is watch the battery to see how low it drops. That's quite normal. Now at this point, I go to the main page and we can see the RPM increasing for the APU and the exhaust gas temperature. When it hits 100%, the other electrics will come on. Now what we can do is check that the APU generator has come online, which it has. It's now powering all of the four buses. And we're getting input to the DC buses as well. After 60 seconds, the APU bleed air will open. The aircraft is going through a series of self-tests now. All these warnings are fairly normal. Okay, you can see the APU. That valve has just opened. And we now have air conditioning from the APU. So far, so good. So we've had the APU running now for several minutes. Everything is stable, and I have set up the screens for the standard start. We have bleed anti-ice, the AC electrical, and the hydraulic diagnostic pages visible. When I start, the engine will take bleed air from the APU to begin rotating. I'll then be looking for rotation on the N2, fuel flow, increasing ITT and increasing N1, which is the main fan. The aircraft is fully chocked. I have the park brake set and I'm in the captain's seat with my feet ready on the brakes, which are on the rudder pedals. The first thing we do is we put the beacon on. Anytime the engines are running, we have the beacon on. And then I select the start switch. Now you're going to see that valve open. There's the start valve, it's open. We now have N2 rotation and we're waiting for ignition. We can see the next thing will be the fuel flow. There it is. And you get light off when you see the ITT increasing. There it goes, you can actually hear it and feel it in the aircraft. Now the N1 is increasing also. And the maximum limit on the starter motor is three minutes, so we actually time that as well. Once the engine is self-sustaining, the start valve closes, usually about 40 to 45 seconds, that's completely normal. 
and once we have a stable start we're looking for about 20 40 60 on the numbers 20 40 60 and then it sequences to the high idle so that's a perfectly good start we're now getting AC electrics from the generators attached to the engines starting number one looking for the start valve looking for N2 ignition and fuel flow There's the ITT increasing, the N1 is increasing, again three minutes is the limit on the starter motor, usually that occurs much faster. and we have both engines running normally. Now I check the hydraulic page, you can see that the 2A and the 1A hydraulic pumps are working, plus 3A which is an electric pump. There's the fuel page. You can see that the respective tank is feeding the respective engine. We'll just let it run now for about 10 minutes and then we'll shut down. What I can also show you is some of the post start actions. We select slats to out and six typically. So the slats are out and the flaps are moving to position six. Now at this point the captain will conduct the flight, flight control test. Okay, I'm actually moving the main yoke. And checking the response of the ailerons and the flight control spoilers. the rudder and the flight spoilers We have the ground lift dumping, we have manual, usually it's in auto, but we test. All the lift dumpers deploy and back to auto. At that point I would engage the nose steering, but no need for that today. And the engine shutdown procedure is very straightforward after completing the after landing checks, taxiing in and with the engines at idle for at least three minutes, we simply select the run switch to off. You can see the N1 reducing, the ITT reducing, and we then select left engine off. Now at this point, the APU has been running the whole time and it will take over the supply to the AC buses.
And of course, no visit to the aircraft is complete without raiding the goodies cupboard. What has she got here for us today? Slim pickings, must be due to the coronavirus. It's very important to remember to release the park brakes now because once I lock up the aircraft, the ground handlers can't get in. And it wouldn't be the first time a pilot got all the way home and got a phone call saying, can you come back and release the park brake? We can't move the aircraft. It's a mistake, fortunately, I have not yet made.